If you like my videos, please check out my website at creationsciencefiction.com. You'll find articles on creationism there, as well as my blog. I also have a Creation Science Fiction Facebook page now, too. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the Young Earth Creationist claims by David Reeves of David Reeves Ministries about the Grand Canyon. David is behind a lot of YEC businesses like the Genesis Science Network, the Creation Club, and he hosts the Creation in the 21st Century show on TBN. I watched a few of his short videos on the Grand Canyon, which are really more like advertisements for his business. Then earlier this week, I went to the Grand Canyon myself and found direct evidence that contradicts his young earth creationist claims. Let's take a look at his first short video now. I'm here in the Grand Canyon and I just reached the Great Unconformity. Now here, Vishnu and Zoroaster is overlaid by Tapit's sandstone. How old are these basement rocks? Well, most uniformitarian geologists would tell us that these were formed around two billion years ago, in some cases older, and that everything we see above it, trust me, it's a lot of sediment, was deposited since that time. Now that's the theory. But it's not a theory, it's a law. The law of superposition says that in any undisturbed sequence of rocks deposited in layers, the youngest layer is on top, the oldest on bottom, each layer being younger than the one beneath it and older than the one above it. But the very next layers on top of the basement rock here is to Pete's sandstone. This is from the Cambrian period, and it's known to contain fossils of complex life forms. It's said to be a billion years younger than the rocks right down here. In other words, a supposed billion years of history is missing in between these two layers. It actually depends where you are in the Grand Canyon as to whether or not those layers are missing. The layers that are missing in places are part of an angular unconformity called the Grand Canyon Supergroup. There are nine different layers that form the Grand Canyon Supergroup, each showing a different environment at the time. The first fossils found in these layers are fully formed creatures just suddenly appearing. Where's the evolution? I'm David Reeves. Truly, the heavens declare the glory of God. Some of those missing layers that he's talking about that aren't really missing everywhere actually contain microfossils and the stromatolites that date between 740 million and 1.2 billion years old. Evidence for life in the Grand Canyon didn't suddenly appear in the Cambrian layers. So that was the first short video. Now we're going to take a look at another short video called No Erosion Between Rock Layers. You've probably heard the conventional story of how the rock layers formed. The most popular story is that rock layers form slowly over millions of years by the same geologic processes we see operating today. Weathering and erosion then produce hills and valleys and the other topographical features we see. But a quick trip into Grand Canyon, perhaps the most spectacular place to view rock layers, shows this narrative can't be right. If this old age view is indeed a correct interpretation of the evidence, we'd expect to see weathering and erosion between rock layers. After all, if those rock layers are being deposited and exposed to the elements for hundreds of thousands or millions of years, you'd expect there to be evidence of it. But we don't find this evidence. What we see instead is rapid or no erosion between the layers. Between various sediment layers in the Grand Canyon, the boundaries are clean and flat. There aren't gullies, hills, and valleys that were slowly filled by the next layer of sediment. Well, yes, actually there are gullies and valleys that were slowly filled by the next layer of sediment. Both the Surprise Canyon Formation and the Temple Butte Formation show us exactly that. The Temple Butte Formation is an ancient riverbed that was carved out of the mauve limestone below by erosion. It was later filled in slowly with sediment from above. There's just a flat, featureless rock layer with another flat and featureless rock layer on top of that. For example, the boundary between the Coconino Sandstone and the Hermit Formation is completely flat and featureless from one side of the Grand Canyon all the way to the other. That's because when the Hermit Shale formed, the Grand Canyon area was part of a shallow sea. It was later covered by the Coconino Sandstone, which was a dry desert environment. 
There's no erosion there because one happened right after the other. That was near the edge of the ocean, and you can see where the shoreline with the Coconino sandstone advanced and retreated many times. David Reeves is either selectively choosing what evidence to present, or he's ignorant of the geology of the region. So how did the soft Coconino sandstone manage to resist erosion for vast eons of time? The logical answer is that it didn't. Well, I'm going to kind of agree with him here, but not for the reasons he thinks. The reason it didn't erode away was the water advanced again and it became covered by the Kaibab limestone. The long ages view of the rock layers simply fails to explain the evidence. But there is a model that does explain why we see very little erosion between layers. In the book of Genesis, we read about a violent global flood that destroyed the world that then was. The raging floodwaters would have ripped up miles of sediment and redeposited it in layers. Now these layers were laid down minutes, hours, or at most days apart from one another. There was no time for slow and gradual erosion to wear down the layers. The biblical historical accounts explain what we see in the world, but the man-made theories of geologic evolution do not. I'm David Reeves. Truly, the heavens declare the glory of God. Well, he's got that backwards because there was certainly no evidence there to support anything he said. But let's go on to short video number three. Genesis 7:19 says that at the time of Noah's flood, the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. It describes a catastrophe that destroyed almost all of the life on the planet. It involved tremendous amounts of water and would have had an erosive power unlike anything that has happened since. But does the Bible know best? Catastrophism has been observed to form geological formations like the Grand Canyon very quickly. No, nothing has ever been shown to form anything like the Grand Canyon rapidly. It averages over 4,000 feet deep, it's 277 miles long, and up to 18 miles wide. In 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted with tremendous force, and one of the side effects was a natural dam of ash and debris that backed up Spirit Lake. Eventually, after a smaller eruption, a giant mud flow formed, washing out a huge new canyon in a matter of hours. Creationists love to use the Tautal River Canyon as evidence that canyons like the Grand Canyon can form quickly. They don't like to tell people that anyone with a decent throwing arm can throw a rock across it at any given point. This on its own is significant, but the new canyon was also found to contain multiple layers of exposed strata. Yes, but they're layers of volcanic ash or unconsolidated pyroclastic flow. Nothing at all like the layers we see in Grand Canyon. Soft strata layers have been observed to rapidly lithify or harden similar to the hard rock layers we find at the Grand Canyon today. It's just not true. Not similar to the layers that we find at the Grand Canyon today. Show me one time where Eolian sandstone has been shown to lithify or harden quickly. Now it's not in the scope of this video to lay out the various theories on how the Grand Canyon formed, but these recent catastrophic events and the subsequent geologic formations should be more than enough reason for us to take a second look at rapid flood erosion, and certainly more than enough to call into question the supposed millions of years that are said to be necessary to produce massive wonders like the Grand Canyon. I'm David Reeves. Truly, the heavens declare the glory of God. Well, truly, David Reeves doesn't know the geology of the area, hasn't really studied geology, and either rejects or avoids any evidence that goes against his predetermined belief. I'll end this video with a few more pictures from my trip to the Grand Canyon earlier this week. 